I think we give students an exposure to everything in our school because we don't know what the future holds for our students and we want them to be ready for anything that their lives take them to and it's our job to be the best for them so anything that a student is passionate about at Keokuk High School it's our job to meet that passion and and to do what they need to do in order to have a brighter future and so for us it's all about our students it's all about the amazing staff that we have here and welcoming our kids to be unique and and, and grow into amazing students and, and awesome citizens we're blessed to have this school we're blessed to have these students we're blessed to to be able to teach them every single day and for them to see their passion and their dreams come alive Yeah. So I grew up in Astoria, Queens. Queens is a small town 20 minutes away from New York City. We grew up in an apartment building. Um, three rooms, not three bedrooms, but three rooms. Uh, my sister, I have an older sister, she and I, we, we slept in the same bedroom. My parents, we had a small living room, they had a fold-out couch, and they would sleep on the fold-out couch. We had one bathroom, a very small kitchen, um, but I, 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 I was blessed with my family and I love them to death. Both my parents are deceased right now, so it's just me and my sister. Uh, I went to a Catholic grammar school, which was first grade to eighth grade. And it was kind of the, the normal thing to do. And when it was high school time, I wanted to do something different. Most of the kids went to the local Catholic high school. And in my apartment building, it was right across the street. So I could have basically woke up, rolled out of bed, and went to school. I decided I wanted to do something a little different than everyone else. So I went to a school called Aviation High School. Aviation High School was in another part of Queens. I had to get up early in the morning. I had to walk five blocks to the train station. I had to hop on two trains. I had to walk another three blocks to go to Aviation High School. 
At the time, like I said, I'm 59 years old. At the time, if you go to aviation high school, if you graduate in four years, you could get either an airframe license or a power plant license to be an airplane mechanic. Back in those days, it was $10 an hour if you became a mechanic. And that's what I wanted to do. And I wanted, that was my goal. So for three years, I did all the technical stuff and I learned all, all the trades. The last year, I found out that I really wasn't very good with my hands. So that wasn't the route I wanted to go. So I went into AP and then eventually I went to college. I went to Hunter College in New York City. It's part of the CUNY system, City University of New York, okay? Um, back in those days, the tuition was $746 a year, a year. Now colleges can be fifty, sixty thousand dollars could be could be tons of money. Um, so things are different back in those days. When I was at Hunter College, I was I, I took a big um, communications class. I knew I wanted to work in television, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. At the time, I was dating a young lady, and and I thought eventually we would get married. So I wanted a job. I knew I liked to watch TV, so I said, well, let me get a job in television. What I did, I took a class with, that was in a big auditorium, right? Maybe 2,000 students, and the teacher would give the lecture. But the teacher said, if you want extra help on a Wednesday, you could come to this little classroom between one and two, and we'll give you extra help. So I went for extra help. When I went to extra help, I was chatting with the woman, and she asked me about my career. She goes, well, what do you want to do with life? I said, I don't know, I guess I want to work in TV. She goes, do you know we have a TV studio here? I said, no. I said, I have no idea about TV studios. Back in the old days, when I grew up, there were seven stations, that's it. And you just turned the knob and, and you watched TV. I didn't know there were cameras, I didn't know there were lights, I didn't know there were mics, I didn't know there were scripts. I just watched TV. So now I go to the TV studio. The TV studio, Hunter College, was a classroom they blacked out the windows. They had three black and white cameras and a tiny little set. It wasn't anything fancy at all. Now, the reason I'm telling you this story, and, and you're going to notice, I'm, I'm just giving you my background. Nothing was wow, OK? So if things in your life right now are not wow, that's OK. Because every situation, every person you meet can help you with your future. Okay? It doesn't have to be the best of the best. It doesn't. But you just have to be motivated. You have to try. You have to work hard. You have to do extra things. So I go to this, I see the TV studio. I meet this man, Sam Jackson. Sam used to work in the Midwest somewhere. I forget what state he worked. But he worked in the studio, and he was like the maintenance guy. He would fix things. I got a job with him, $1.50 an hour, and I would work with Sam, and I would learn stuff with Sam Jackson. Next semester, I take the class, TV 101, right? It's the first class you could take. I go into the classroom, and the professor, professor is teaching, I know more than the professor. How do I know more from the professor? Because I was working with Sam Jackson, right? So now, eventually, there's internships. You could go, does everybody know what internships are? I don't have to explain that, okay? I do an internship at Lenox Hill Hospital. Now you say, Lenox Hill Hospital? What are you doing at Lenox Hill Hospital? Now, I'm gonna jump ahead. Life, especially career, is not a linear path. It's not a straight path, unless you wanna be a doctor, you wanna be an attorney, you wanna do trade school, you wanna do military then it's kind of a straight path. But if you want to go to college and you want to try different things, it's very broad and there's so many different things you could do and so many different majors could take you to different places and so many different people could help you along the way. Um, you know, you see my videos and I say, God bless you, you see my tattoos, I'm religious, I'm spiritual. I believe that every person on this earth you treat them with respect. You treat them with kindness. You help others, right? And, and you don't do it to expect something back. But good things do come back. 
When you do good unto others, it comes back to you. When you're kind to others, kindness comes back to you. When you help other people, help comes back to you. It's just the way it is, right? So I get an internship at Lenox Hill Hospital. Lenox Hill Hospital is one man, his name is John Cardone. He is the producer, director, writer, camera person, lighting person, audio person, everything. He's a one-man show in the audio-visual department of Lenox Hill Hospital. I do a three-month internship with him. I learn everything that John knows, single camera production, okay? Not multiple cameras, one camera. You shoot it, you edit it, all that. Go back to Hunter College. I'm still in school, right? I'm still at Hunter College. I get an internship at WPIX-TV. You might not know the call letters, but that's where Yankee baseball is from, okay? So Yankee baseball, and they're famous for their news. I get an internship at WPIX-TV. At WPIX-TV, they, they have what's called public affair shows. They're, the public, they're shows to, to, to help the public, some are religious shows. They taped in the studio Monday through Friday from three to five every day. We had four interns from all over the United States. I was one of the interns, right? We were told, my boss told me, each day, one intern Monday, one Tuesday, one Wednesday, one Thursday, and Friday we rotate. That's what I was told. I made sure I was in the studio five days a week. I did not step on anybody's toes. I wasn't mean. But I knew if I want to get something out of this internship and I want to learn TV, well, I better be in that TV studio. So I was in the TV studio five days a week. Now, all of a sudden, these producers, right? There were three producers at the time. They knew multiple camera production. So basically, you, you book guests, you write scripts, you invite them in, and then the director directs the show. Well, the show started doing a, a nighttime single camera production, an entertainment show. None of the producers knew how to do single camera production. I raised my hand, I say, I know how to do single camera. Where did I learn it? Lenox Hill Hospital, right? So now I go out with a professional camera crew. I go out with a professional producer and we do celebrity interviews. And I'm telling the producers what to do. And I'm still 18, 19 years old. And I'm telling the producers what to do. Eventually, the producers saw what I was doing. They sent me out by myself with a camera crew doing interviews by myself. Now, in those days also, okay, we're talking before computers. We're talking before cell phones. It's early. They're cranky. I get all the videotapes. I put them in the machine. I zero the clock. And I watch every single footage. And I handwrite what the scene is. And then I look at the digital clock and I write down the time. And I do this for three videotapes, four videotapes. The producers are supposed to come in at 6.30 to edit. I make sure I'm in there at six o'clock. I have tables set up. I have every single tape out. I have in loose leaf handwritten notes with all the scenes, with all the times. I have coffee, I have bagels. The producer comes in cranky, tired, and everything is done for this producer. See the extra things that you do in life, right? Everybody could go to school, everybody could get good grades, everybody could say they go to college, they do TV 101, and I could produce, I could direct, I could write. But what are the extra things that you do, okay? So that was extra what I did. I, I, I did the work for the person, I brought the coffee, I got the bagels, right? It's not wrong with getting coffee and bagels for people, especially early on in your career, right? Eventually, one of the women producers got pregnant, she left. They had to offer the job to one of the four interns. Who do you think got the job? I got the job. I'm still in college. I'm in Hunter College. I'm a sophomore, and I'm producing for WPIX-TV. Now, I knew I still wanted a college education. So what I did while I was working 9.30 to 5.30, I went to night school, okay? I realized I didn't enjoy night school. So the next semester I got up early and I went to early morning school. 
So I went to early morning school and then I worked my job. I didn't like that either. I spoke to my boss, she gave me a two hour lunch. So I worked, I got a two hour lunch, hopped on the train, took my classes, came back. And I finished and I got my diploma. Now, eventually there was a job opening in the union, it's called the Directors Guild of America, for an associate director slash stage manager. Now, I had no desire to do that. Remember me, I just went to Hunter College and I knew I liked TV, but I knew nothing about TV. All of a sudden, there's a, a, there's a bulletin board saying opening. And the whole crew, right? The camera guys, the audio guys, everybody that I hung out with said, Ed, you have to go for this job. I said, okay. So now I go to my boss, the executive producer, Kathy Maynard at the time. I said, Kathy, I want to apply for this job. She goes, I had no idea you wanted to do this job. I said, I had no idea either, but the crew told me I should do it. So she said, okay. Now in those days, there was a, a, a catch 21, catch 22, catch 22. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I forget things. So you can't get a job unless you're in the union. You can't get in the union unless you have a job. So how do I get a job? So Kathy, my boss said, I will give you the job and I will call the union and I will get you into the union. So she got me into the union, I got the job. So now I'm at WPIX TV. Instead of working 9.30 to 5.30 producing, I switched to six o'clock at night to two in the morning. And now I'm an associate director slash stage manager. I'm in the Directors Guild of America. What I'm doing now is the news because nighttime is all the news, right? So we do the 7.30 news at 11 o'clock every day. I have a two hour break from 11 to 1 a.m. Okay, 11 to 1 a.m. I have a two hour break every day. Two times five, 10, 10 hours. In those days, like I said, no computer, no Google search, no cell phones. I knew, like my daughter Olivia, and she'll tell you later on, she wants to work in entertainment. She wants to go to California. I knew I wanted to do entertainment. And at the time, all the entertainment was in California. So I knew after doing news and public affairs, I wanted to work entertainment. I wanted to go to California. So what did I do? I watched all my favorite TV shows, right? And I would look at the credits and I would find the executive producer's name and I would write it down. And then I'd find the credits and see Universal Pictures, Paramount Pictures, Disney, and I'd write it down. And I can't Google search, you know, I have to go through the yellow pages and I have to go in California and I have to look yellow pages for all these companies. And I find the companies. Now, I, f I start my job, my new job, in the union, working six to two, and my first day on my two hour break, I'm typing up letters for what I want next. So I'm typing up four or five letters a day. So four or five times five, 20, 25 letters. 25 letters a day, my first day on the job I'm doing, because I knew I wanted something else, right? Eventually, I wanted, I wanted to leave because I, I did it for a year and I said, I need to go to California. I was told that in California, a lot of people don't like New Yorkers and there's this, this, this meanness between us. It wasn't like that at all. I, I set up a two week vacation, 14 days to be in California, right? What I did is I contacted 14 shows in California and I said, I'm coming to California, I'd like to observe. Not only did I get 14, I got 15 shows, 15 situation comedies game shows, music shows, said I could come and I could be on the set, on a headset, and I could listen to the show and I could observe. After three or four days, I don't remember, three or four days, I hopped on a plane, I came back home. I didn't like California. I didn't want to be away from my family. Okay? Now, Olivia, when she goes to California, she's going with three or four friends. So if they hang out, it might be a different experience. I went solo, I didn't enjoy it. I came back home. I, I started freelancing and I started, my first network job was all my children, the soap opera. 
and I don't know if you know about soap operas, if they're still around, but I would do, I would work with actors, right? And then eventually I would get more and more jobs. I would get called. Back in those days, before cell phones, you'd have a little box, it was a pager or a beeper. So if somebody wants you, they call you and it vibrates, it beeps, and then you have to call them back. I made sure as a freelancer, any time and every time I got called, I would call them back immediately, immediately. And if they offered me a job, if I could take it, yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna say something later on about always saying yes. But if I wasn't available, I made sure I didn't just say I'm not available and hang up. I would say, hey, I'm not available, but I know three other people that are available and I would give three other names. You think that's crazy doing that? Not at all. Because that person who needs to book somebody quickly, now they don't have to go through their Rolodex or all their notes. I gave them a name, they call up a name, they book somebody. In the future, even if that person was better than me, they would still call me back just because the gesture of calling them back quickly and then trying to help them. So these are life lessons that I'm teaching you. It doesn't have to be TV, but this is life lessons in general. Let me just skip to more of a general thing. At this stage in your life, right? High school students, some of you might go into work, some of you might go into the military, some of you might go into college, right? But at this stage of your life, career-wise, the word no does not exist in your vocabulary. Career-wise, now I'm a father, I have four children, so obviously morally, the word no exists, but career-wise, it's yes, yes, yes. Let's say Friday night, I'm gonna do a shoot and I need somebody at nine o'clock and I call and I ask you, hey, could you come nine o'clock? And you say no, you're done. That's it, you're done, in my eyes. Now, unless you have a parent who's a vice president, a big executive producer or something, they'll keep you along. But in my eyes, I'm doing something and I'm asking you and you say no, that's it. Now I move on, now I go to you. I'm not sure if life's like that all the time, but at this stage of your life, it's yes, 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 career-wise, okay? And so eventually, I start freelancing all, the, all over the place and then my name started getting around and people would call me and I would be the first person I call. Then I got a call at Good Morning America, which is a morning TV show. So I don't know if any of you even know the show. When I got the call, I didn't even know what the show was either. But I go in, I do the show. There's usually two stage managers on a set. It's a two hour live show. It's an entertainment news show. There's music, there's fashion. There's politicians, there's authors, there's all different types of things. I go in, I have a headset on. For two hours, I got yelled at by the director because I didn't know what I was doing and I kind of messed up. I don't get called for 11 months. 11 months, I don't get called. 11 months later, I get a call. This time I do the show, but I do it with another stage manager who knows the show very well. So he holds my hand and basically says, go here, go there. I do the show. After that, I become the number one backup. So they call me all the time. Because somebody helped me, somebody held my hand. Eventually, I talked to the director. His name is Don Roy King. I don't know if you know that name, but currently, Don Roy King directs Saturday Night Live. And he's an Emmy Award winning director. So I, I go up to Don, I say, hey Don, you know, I did the show 11 months ago. You yelled at me the whole time. I get called 11 months later. I said, what was up with that? He said, Ed, on my desk, he said, I had six resumes of all freelance stage managers. It took me 11 months to fire everybody, and you were next. So that was the reality. Reality in live network television, he had a bunch of people, and then I was on the bottom and it was my turn. But when it was my turn, I said yes. And then when I said yes, I did a good job and I've been on that show consistently for 33 years. I've traveled the world, I traveled all around the United States, I met four presidents, I met tons and worked with tons of music artists and actors and, and 
a lot of times they turn the camera around, I'm on the camera too. So it, it's a really cool job, it's a fun job. But in my freelance days, I worked everything from news, sports, I've worked children's shows, I, I, I've done the gamut of everything. But I decided that I wanted to stay at this job because I'm a family person and I decided that that is important in my life. Now, you guys are still young and you're still deciding what your career wants to be. And you, you could do a career for five years and change it. It's okay, it's totally cool. But when, when you're doing your career, think, also think when you're 30 years old, 35, 40. Do you wanna be married? Do you wanna be single? Do you wanna have kids? Do you not wanna have kids? Do you want to live in a house? Do you want to live in an apartment? Do you want to live in your state? Do you want to live in another state? That should be part of your life dreams also. Because I've met a lot of women who work in TV that work 60, 70, 80 hours. And they would work, work, work. And they would hit around 40 years old and they didn't meet the right person. And they didn't get married or they got married and worked, worked, worked and didn't have children because their job was so important to them. Now, I'm not being judgmental at all. I'm observing what I have observed. If you want to work and work and work and you want to work 70, 80, 90 hours, that's cool. God bless you, that's fine. But if that isn't what you want when you're older, if you want to be married and you want to have kids or you want to do different things, keep that in the back of your mind too. That's very important. Does anybody have any questions? Because I could probably talk for more, but uh... Hello guys, how are you?